we review some classical combinatorial optimization problems and show how they can be modeled as mixed integer linear problems. In this video, we introduce the traveling salesman problem. Consider a network with n nodes that are representing cities, let's say. For any pair ij of cities, we know the distance between them, cij. The problem consists in finding the shortest possible itinerary that starts from the hometown of a salesman, which is one of the nodes, visit all other cities and come back home. In order to model it as an optimization problem, we need to do three things. Define the decision variables, the objective function, and the constraints. We will consider the variable xij, which will be 1 if city j is visited just after city i, and 0 otherwise. The objective function will consist in minimizing the sum over all connections between cities of the cost to travel from i to j times xij. This is a linear function in the decision variables. Now we need to include the constraints. The first constraint says that we need each city to have exactly one successor in the tour so that these variables make sense. We can write this as the following. We need that the sum over j such that ij belongs to the network of x i j must be equal to 1 for all nodes. It means that from i there is only one city j that will be the successor of i in the tour. So this is the constraint that says that we have exactly one successor. Now we need to do the same for the predecessor. So we have that the sum of i such that ij belongs to a of x ij is equal to 1 for all j in n. It means that we need exactly one predecessor for each node. These constraints are linear constraints in the decision variable, which is fine. However, they are not sufficient to model the problem completely. In order to, to understand why, let's look at an example. So here I have four cities, Lausanne, Geneva, Bern, and Zurich. And I have a link between each pair of cities associated with the lengths and kilometers separating the two cities. So this is the data of the problem. The salesman lives in Lausanne and needs to visit the three other cities before coming back to Lausanne by making the least possible number of kilometers. Here is a feasible solution where the salesman starts from home in Lausanne goes to Bern, then to Geneva, then to Zurich, and then back to Lausanne. Note that in this example, it's symmetric, so the tour can be taken in one direction or the other one, it does not matter. The total length of this tour is 769 kilometers. Well, I'm sure that you can find a better one, but finding the best one is not necessarily easy. Let's go back to the modeling, and let's look at the example here. I define the following decision variable, x l g equals x g l equals 1. So g is the successor of l in this tour, and l is the successor of g. Then I have the same between Zurich and Bern, I have x z z b equals x b z, this is equal to 1. If you calculate the objective function, you obtain 378 kilometers. So it's way better than the solution we had before. We have exactly one predecessor for each city. For Geneva, it's Lausanne. For Lausanne, it is Geneva. For Bern, it is Zurich. And for Zurich, it's Bern. And same thing, there is exactly one successor for each city. But clearly, this is not a valid solution. It does not represent a tour. So we say that this solution contains sub-tours. We have two sub-tours, one from Lausanne to Geneva, back to Lausanne and one from Bern to Zurich back to Bern. I said before that the constraints that we have defined are not sufficient. Indeed, 
we need to add new constraints that will eliminate these subtours because they don't belong to a valid solution. It is important to note here that the problem comes from the fact that some subtours are completely disconnected from the home. There are several ways to eliminate subtours. They are called subtour elimination constraints. Uh, in this video, we will review one way of doing this. The idea is to include new variables. For each city, we will define a variable yi, which will represent the position of city i in the tour. So if we go from Lausanne to Geneva to Bern to Zurich, we will number them 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. This is what yi is representing. We need to impose that for each i and j different from home, if it has been decided that j is visited just after i, then we need the position of j to be at least the position of y plus 1. If we take the example again, we have this tour that we have defined. This one is a valid tour. So Bern is the successor of Lausanne in the tour. So we put yb is equal to 1. Then we go to Geneva, yg would be equal to 2. And then we'll have yz is equal to 3. Note that we don't deal with the home city. Indeed, the subtours which are problematic are the subtours that do not include the home. If we now consider the example that was not valid, well, we can put yg equals 1, which would be OK. We could put yb equals 2. But then what do we put to yz? Remember that because x, b, z equals 1, we need uh, yz to be greater or equal to yb plus 1, which is 3. And because x, z, b equals 1, then we need yb to be greater or equal to yz plus 1, which means yz less or equal to yb minus 1, which is equal to 1. And it's not possible for yz to be both greater or equal to 3 and less or equal to 1. So this is not feasible. This constraint will be violated and the subtour will be eliminated. Now, this condition is a logical condition. But we have seen rules to translate logical conditions into a mathematical formulation for an optimization problem. So I, I let you do it as a modeling exercise using the optional constraints that we have seen before. And what we obtain is the following constraint. We have x, i, j, n minus 1 plus y, i minus y, j less or equal to n minus 2. This is the constraint. Note that it's a linear constraint in the decision variables. Let's verify that it is doing the job. If x, i, j is equal to 1, so if j is the successor of i in the tour, n minus 1 plus yi minus yj less or equal to n minus 2, which is basically yj greater or equal to yi plus 1. That's exactly what we need. And now what happens if x ij is equal to 0? So in this case, we have yi minus yj less or equal to n minus 2. Well, this is always verified because cities, they are numbered from 1 to n minus 1. Indeed, we don't number the home, the city. Therefore, the biggest difference between the numbers is n minus 1 minus 1 is equal to n minus 2. So this constraint here is always verified. And we have what we need. Putting everything together, we have the formulation of the traveling salesman problem as an integer optimization problem. We minimize the total length of the tour, subject to the fact that each city must have exactly one successor, each city must have exactly one predecessor. We have the subtour elimination constraints that we have defined here. 
xij a binary variable that represent the fact that we decide to visit city j just after city i and yi are integer variable that must be non-negative they represent the numbering of the cities in the tour the traveling salesman's problem is a very classical combinatorial optimization problem and we have shown in this video one way to model it as an integer linear problem.